Good evening. I'm reading from Psalm 71, verse 1. 71, verse 1. In you, O Lord, I put my trust. Let me never be put to shame. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you that you're a God who understands each one of us. We can always come to you. You are a God our rock, our fortress, we can always run into you and feel safe. We want to thank you, Lord, just along with the psalmist. This too, O Lord, is our prayer. This too, O Lord, is our praise. That when we run to our Lord, we can put our trust in you and we will never be put to shame. Through the service, be enthroned. Teach us how we can run into your fortress and be safe. Let our feet be constantly removed from things that are shameful. and Be secured in you, your word and your presence, O Lord. Continue to be enthroned in and through this service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we begin this service, we would begin it by singing our first hymn, A Mighty Fortress is Our God, lyrics of which will appear in your screen.
take this time to welcome each one of you for this evening midweek Lenten service. We'll continue to pray and look up to God. Let us pray. Father, even as we sang and declared that you are our mighty fortress, our God, our safe place, where we can put our feet on firm rock to stand. We thank you for what you did on the cross, that we do not have to run and endure shame. You've given us security in you. You washed us clean. You've called us your children. You've redeemed us. And through this service, O oh Lord, I pray that you would speak to us we are human beings, and so many times we are lost. But I pray, O oh Lord, that all of the mortal things that are happening around us would not take our focus, would not govern us. That our eyes would be fixed on you, the author and the finisher of our faith. That we will hold on to your hands and keep moving forward. Our fears, our failures, our faithless situations, all of this, O oh Lord, we bring to you. Forgive us. We confess it's difficult for us to walk without you. Hold our hands and let us know through the service, through your word, that you have said it is finished, that you have fought in battle and you won, that you will continue to lead us forward. Speak to us through the service. Prepare our hearts and help us to continue to walk closer to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we prepare our hearts for worship, we'll sing the song, The Old Rugged Cross, lyrics of which will appear in your screens.
a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross where the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners was slain. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. Oh, that old rugged cross, so despised by the world, has a wondrous attraction for me. For the dear Lamb of God left His glory above to bear it to dark Calvary. So I'll cherish the old rugged Till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a Stained with blood so divine, a wondrous beauty I see. For it was on that old cross, Jesus suffered and died. To pardon and sanctify me. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay. Down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a We'll listen to the scripture reading now.
Today's reading is taken from the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Book of Hebrews, chapter 12, verses 1. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so e easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Here ends the reading. Praise be to God. Let us pray. Father, who orchestrated the salvation of mankind, we come to you this evening knowing that it's not only the work of salvation, but the gift of salvation that needs to be understood, and only you can teach us. Blessed Holy Spirit, be our teacher today, every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. There are a few days in world history which remind us of the grim reality of loneliness. The streets of our city nowadays are a reality of what it is to not have a normal day-to-day -day living. Roads are empty. Buildings and institutions are closed. There's something eerie about the thought of loneliness. It's a very grim topic to discuss, but how beautiful the Bible takes something so painful, personal, and gives hope gives a message for you and I to relate with. And this evening, we're going to straight go into the book of Hebrews. I'm sure you have sat with your families, with your Bibles before you. So would you turn to the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, and I'm going to read for us verse 2. Hebrews 12, 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. I was reading another translation earlier, and it said, Jesus is the founder and perfecter of faith. I thought that word is very interesting. He is the founder and perfecter. And another translation also says, he not only despised the shame, he scorned the shame. Now that's what sometimes we say, giving a, a counter answer to someone who has hurtfully thrown words at you. And you give that kind of an answer, where the one who wanted to put you to shame, actually doesn't know what to do because his shame has not been taken as a hurtful statement. That's precisely what Jesus did in the highest form. He scorned the shame. Now let me paint a picture as we begin our study this evening. A 32-year-old Jewish young man is hanging on a cross with loincloths around his waist. His crime was that he did no crime. Think about it. If, you know, if a shirt button falls off, if, if somewhere if there is a wardrobe malfunction, imagine the shame that goes, goes along with it. 
This is not a wardrobe malfunction. Jesus hanging on the cross was a malfunction intentionally planned. And when Jesus told his disciples, we have to go to Jerusalem, he knew exactly what he was going for and he chose. Think about the man on loincloths hanging on the cross. Now when you read John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave. That he gave. When Jesus is hanging on the cross with shame, the only person, listen very carefully to the statement, the only person who did not consider that moment as shame was Jesus. Everybody else thought it is a shameful place to be. The high priests would have thought we have achieved by putting him down. The soldiers would have thought what a shameful act. His disciples did not want to be there. Because it's a place of shame. But only Jesus, who was going through that shame, found no shame in it. Found no shame in it. I'm going to keep it very brief this evening, and I want to give you three words that go with the understanding of the loneliness of shame. Number one, sin caused shame. Cross crossed the shame. Righteousness covers my shame. Sin caused the shame. Isn't it very interesting? I find it, in fact, fascinating that in the Bible, it begins, and you and I know, in chapter 3, in chapter 2, when God made Adam and Eve, he created them in such holy beauty. In fact, a holy mind will understand this without looking at it as a funny statement. A holy God makes a holy couple, gives them holy beauty, yet... They were without clothes. What is considered to be a shameful posture was considered shame only after sin entered. Until then, Adam and Eve were perfectly holy. Now we are not talking this evening, we are not talking about shame that comes because, oh I did something bad, somebody found it out, oh it is so shameful. No, we are talking, I am defining shame this evening as something that people want to dump on a person. I want to add in the word slander. Where there is a false accusation and you want to shame another person. When you take it in that angle, this shame was caused by sin. It's, it's, it's like taking the most expensive clothes, removing it off and stitching yourself with clothes of newspaper. Wouldn't that sound ridiculous? That's precisely what Adam and Eve did when they lost the clothing of holiness. And in Genesis 3, Jesus would ask those three questions. Where are you? Who told you? Why are you hiding? All those three questions will find an answer in John 14 verse 6, where Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. That's a different study altogether. Three questions, three answers found in one person, Jesus Christ. Who told them it was shameful? Sin caused that shame. 
Then the second one, cross crossed that shame. Cross crosses the shame that comes with sin and guilt. That is why when you read the book of Romans, one of the most beautiful writings of an intellectual scholar, but one who writes with such authority and clarity. Let me read for you a couple of verses, familiar verses. If you turn with me to Romans chapter 8, verses 38 and 39. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. But these two verses are preceded by this in verse 37. Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Now you'll have to step back from you reading that verse and if you can try and imagine Paul saying those words. He was conquered by pride when he left for Damascus. He was conquered by religious stubbornness when he left for Damascus. He was conquered by his titles and the flags on his shoulder. The badges that he was wearing, the pride of his identity. Saul, who is now called Paul, is saying we are conquered by love. We are conquered by love. I remember reading about this several years back. The greatest loneliness of a person is not experienced by the one who is believed, but the one who bullies. You might have heard about school place bullying, workplace harassment, torturing another person, a psychologist actually says the greatest torment is not in the weaker person but in the person who uses his power to put somebody to shame. Saul was there in a place where he used his power to torment but then when he found Jesus, the shame of sin is crossed out and then he says, I'm not going to be shameful anymore because doesn't matter what he or she calls about me, doesn't matter what he or she thinks about me, yet in all this, we are more than conquerors. My brother, my sister, think about this. As you read about world events, even in the midst of the corona that's happening, there are still persecutions happening in the world. There are still places where people are torn of their identity. There is physical agony, pain and shame. But many of them turn and they say, we, our only joy is that Jesus is ours and nobody can take that away. Nobody can take it away. Sin causes the same, uh, shame. The cross crosses the shame. Thirdly and finally, I'd like to take you to two verses. When you find it in the book of Revelation chapter 3. Of the seven churches, I'm referring to the last of the seven churches, the church in Laodicea. When you look at this passage, the church, listen very carefully, to a church, the Spirit of the Lord is saying, you must be ashamed of yourself. You are rich, but you're actually poor. You have a lot of clothing, but you're actually naked because their problem was being lukewarm the problem was being 
lukewarm i want to draw your attention to rome revelation chapter 3 and verse 18 i counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire that you may be rich and white garments that you may be clothed that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed and anoint your eyes with eye salve that you may see righteousness clothes me and gives me a beauty that the world cannot understand let me take you to the cross that 32 year old Jewish man who is Jesus our Savior as I was recently reading this verse a Greek word caught my attention it's a familiar word the word is called pater pater in Greek means father Abba when you read Luke's gospel chapter 23 verse 46 Luke 23 verse 46 we're all familiar father into your hands I commit my spirit don't read it too fast I always say when you read the Bible read it very slowly here is this sinless savior hanging on the cross whipped spat upon he was put to shame but in three separate junctures Jesus is calling upon the father and we are all familiar number one father forgive them the same Jesus later on he says after three hours of darkness my God my God why hast thou forsaken me but after a few minutes the same Jesus now knows no 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 this is not shameful at all yes my appearance is shameful but there's no shame in me he is still my father You may have had to go through difficulties in life because of your faith. You may have been ridiculed because you are the only person in your family who is praying. You may be ridiculed for quoting Bible verses where people don't want to listen to God's rule. You may be mocked because you want to walk the narrow way and not cut corners. You may think, I feel so lonely. That's why I chose Hebrews 12 to turning our eyes, fixing our eyes on Jesus, because Jesus teaches us a beautiful lesson in the midst of your loneliness. You have a pater. You and I have an Abba a father he understands the loneliness of our soul he understands the pain of our minds and he says what you feel is not necessarily who you are what others want to dump on you is not what I want to show you I love you with an everlasting love even as you walk through this Lent studying the various aspects of loneliness I want you to know you have a pater you have a father keep calling unto him every time you feel did I miss out by not taking that shortcut if I had signed one signature I would have been far off in my life I would not be ridiculed and mocked. Let me close by making this statement. Those 
who are persecuted for their faith chose to be persecuted they chose righteousness and as part of the journey of faith is this place of shame and pain but the bible says great is our reward in heaven great is our reward in heaven you may feel painful but i want you to know in hebrews 12 1 the bible says therefore since we have a cloud of witnesses who are they they are those many of them most of them went through great shame because of their faith but all of them stood for their faith and lo and behold you find their names in the hall of faith as we call it in hebrews 11 fix your eyes on jesus the author and the perfecter of your faith who scorned shame next time you feel if i open my mouth my own family members will mock me but if you have to speak out for god speak if you have to go into your workplace and be that man woman of integrity and you may feel left out i encourage you go through that with the strength of the lord because remember in your shame you have a father in your pain you have a father and the bible promises us you will never leave us or forsake us let's look to god in prayer heavenly father we thank you dear pater my father we thank you that in the midst of others misses misunderstanding us giving us false labels we the body of christ find our greatest joy in knowing that we have a partner and so lord we look to you for guidance and for anyone calling upon you and saying is it worth it to be pure and holy to say no to lust to say no to sinful temptations i pray lord that you'd give them the strength to know heaven rejoices when we are clothed with righteousness continue to lead us oh lord we love you we praise you in jesus name we pray amen shall we look to the lord in prayer O oh Lord our loving heavenly father we thank you for giving us this beautiful time to gather together in spirit though we are away in physically thank you for this time that we could all meditate on the cross Lord the message of the cross is precious to us we thank you for giving us your only son to die on the cross for our sins for raising him up from the dead so that he might give us salvation the fact that he is coming back again in glory to judge the living and the dead and to take all those who have put their faith and trust in him to be with him forever lord we thank you for this plan of salvation and for the hope of the future and we thank you for this beautiful lenten season where we could meditate on all these aspects and also to share the message of the good news with the people around us Lord even at this time while the world is going through a terrible consequence on account of the virus attack we pray for your mercy and for your grace upon all of the afflicted and upon all of the people 
the entire humanity that is plagued by this virus. Lord, you are aware that many are sick, many have lost their loved ones, and there is panic all around. People have lost their peace of mind, and we could see businesses being shattered, the economy being destroyed, and the whole world has ground to a halt. Lord, at this time, we pray for your special grace and mercy. We plead with you that you may for forgive each of us of our sins. We pray that the sins of the whole world may not be laid to our charge. We pray that by your grace and by your mercy, this virus effect may be taken away from us. We pray that the halt of this, the march of this virus may be halted. Lord, we pray that those who are sick may recover. Those who have lost their loved ones may be comforted. Lord, above all, we pray that the world turns towards you. They realize that you are the only true God, the only just and wise and almighty and powerful God. We especially at this time, pray for all those who are battling the front lines, the doctors, the nurses, the paramedical staff, the utility workers, and those who are working in essential services for maintaining law and order and for many different areas to keep the wheels moving. Lord, we especially pray for them and their families. We know that they are under great stress and they are also, the families are also aware that they could be threatened any time by this virus infection. We pray for, pray for your special care and protection upon each of them. We pray for guidance to our leaders who make all these decisions. Lord, we pray that the whole population in all of our states and our nation and all over the world may recognize the efforts of the leaders and ensure that they cooperate to ensure that we are able to be relieved of this effects of this virus. Above all, Lord, we pray that your supernatural power will descend upon this world to free us of this disease. Lord, we also pray at this time that the virus of sin which is there in each of us, we pray that we will use your blood as the antidote for that sin because that's a purpose for which you came. Lord, at this time we pray that the world would recognize that the sin is far more potent than the virus that we see because the virus is for this world but the sin is for all of eternity. Lord, we pray that as your instruments, as your body of people who go out into the world, we may be able to bring the gospel of peace, of love, and the salvation that you're offering to us freely to the world around us. We pray that everyone in this world may have an opportunity to make an informed choice to follow thee. We especially pray at this time for our leaders and for all those in authority over us that they may do their work with justice and compassion and that they'll be guided by wisdom from above. We also pray for the various mission organizations, the missionaries, evangelists, and the people of the faith who are working hard to take the gospel far and wide, particularly in these trying circumstances. Lord, we pray that you'll be with them and the families, particularly those who are working under very difficult circumstances and that their work may bear fruit. We pray that each of us who are attending this online service may be so challenged to be your instruments, to be your vessels and bear the message of the good news to the community around us. Lord, we pray that by our thoughts, words and our actions, by our reactions to all that we see around us, we may be witnesses for the community around us and that people will see a difference in us and that that itself by, by itself will be a witness for you. Once again, we thank you for this beautiful time this evening, for this time that we could have together in spirit. And we pray for your special blessings upon your people, upon their families, upon their community and the neighbor, neighborhood in which we reside. 
We pray that you'll be with us during the season and in the days to come. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Shall we say the Lord's Prayer together? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As our closing hymn, we would now be singing Be Thou My Vision, hymn number 465. Hymn number 465, Be Thou My Vision. Father, we thank you for you have been with us this evening. We thank you for your promises. We thank you 
that you promise that you will never leave us nor forsake us. That as we battle the problems of this world, that you have finished your work on the cross and you've given us eternal life. Help us, O oh Lord, that we will constantly remove our feet from this worldly, shameful things. And we would put our feet in the most secured place, your presence. O oh God of all glory and honor, we want to thank you for this precious gift of your life on the cross that each of us have exchanged our shame. You've taken it away. We do not need to struggle, O oh Lord. Keep our feet continually moving away close to yours. Our hearts always with yours. Our eyes focused on what you want to tell us. And our hands and our feet always doing what pleases you. Bless today and this whole week for us. We ask all of this in and through the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. May the blessings of God the Father, God our Savior, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit rest and abide with each one of us now and until the coming of our Lord. Amen. 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 God bless each one of you.